Lyömäärä yhteen käsiä. Voidaan tässä vaiheessa ruveta, käydään kroppaa vähän lampiolla ja painetaan käsiä yhteen kiihtyvään tahtiin, koska tämä on Reku Kratsaansa 2019. Nyt mennään hyvin yleisöön, painetaan käsiä yhteen. Lisää, lisää. Voitte pitää meteliä, antakaa lisää, koska siellä on tällä hetkellä tuota poli. The first steps towards the world championship. First time ever racing in Asia. Some familiar rivalries. Doc Rockdog goes down. He's dead last right now. A shocking early exit for the defending champion. Gotta fight harder in the corners, I guess. A former champion fighting for redemption. Oh, my God. I'm very hungry to get that world title back. Another title defense is off to a flying start. The next challenge, the natural ice track in Finland. I'm ready. Anytime you want. This track is no stranger to action oh, and Scott and drama. Great jokes of the sport. <laughs> what will 2019 bring? I got my work cut out for me. I hate that track, but we'll see what I can do. Red Bull Crash Dice starts right now. Hello everyone and welcome to Finland for the second ATSX 1000 Red Bull Crash Dice event of the 18-19 season. I'm Troy Mannering and alongside me again is former competitor Reed Whiting. Reed, it's our fourth year here in Avescula and this course always provides for the most exciting races of the season. That's right, Troy. Natural ice surface here is unpredictable, which leads to some wild racing and sometimes a little bit of controversy, which we saw in the men's final last year when two of the four riders were disqualified for illegal contact. Will we see drama again? We'll find out. At 630 meters, because of the mammoth length, stamina plays a key role in whether you're a winner or a loser here. All the other tracks have artificial coolant system underneath, the ice is perfect. Here, there was dirt here and snow and weeds. It makes the track very difficult to stay on your feet. If you have no scaffolding under here, it's usually just more rough from the get-go, the way it's built. Sometimes there's some holes on the track waiting for the leaders. If there is a crash, there's lots of time to make it up and make up that space on the race. This is the longest course in history and that's what gives it the most action. Being the longest track, it really tests the athlete's stamina and you definitely feel a burn the whole way down. When your legs are tired and you're skating through really rough ice, it makes it near impossible to have perfect runs. I feel like the lead up to this race creates drama and intensity. Do I want to take this off and do it right here? I'm ready. Anytime you want. You won't go to the next track. Down. Scott goes down with a huge hit on the boards at the top. People are getting excited. They're starting to think about the end of the season, so they really know that points come into play, and they want it really bad. So that start gate up there is going to be wild. American Cameron Nas is a back-to-back -back champion and is currently atop the rankings in 2019. 2012 world champion Canadian Kyle Croxall currently sitting in second place overall. Kyle got a second here last year, but was disqualified, giving the win to Austrian Luca Delago. His younger brother, Scott Croxall, is the reigning world champion and currently is sitting in fourth place. Yeah, Troy, you heard Nas saying in the opening of this show, he does not like the track, actually hates his track. And there's reasons for that. He's struggled here, took multiple toe picks. His best finish is actually third place, and last year came in 13th. So, Struggles is the word of the day for Cameron Oz. And we have a similar world championship story on the women's side. Canadian stunt woman Jacqueline Legere is back on top of the rankings in 2019. She won back-to-back -back titles in 2016 and 17, and she has two wins and a second place finish this season so far. That second place finish was actually in Yokohama in December where she was outskated by reigning champion Amanda Trunzo. We see her there on the skis. 
Uh, Trunzo has been unbeatable this year, winning both events she's competed in, and she has actually won the last two years Ooh. in Alaska, so this is no doubt her track. Well, there are nine races on three continents in this season's ATSX Ice Cross Downhill World Championship Series. And with three levels of competition giving the points needed for the overall title, there's a lot of chances for these athletes to gain points. Here's more on the fastest sport on skates. Physical, tactical. This is Red Bull Crash Ice. Men and women, as well as juniors from up to 25 different countries, race down towering ice tracks at speeds of up to 80 kilometers per hour. Heats of four skaters or riders compete head to head with the fastest two advancing until four are left standing for the final. Red Bull Crashed Ice is the top level of competition at the ATSX Ice Cross Downhill World Championship with a maximum 1,000 points available. Together with the supporting ATSX 500 and 250 point events, there are plenty of chances for the riders to earn valuable championship points. After all nine events, the riders with the highest number of points will be crowned Ice Cross Downhill World Champions. So lots of opportunity to gain points, but it's also fun to highlight an underdog, especially on this unpredictable track. And I hesitate to call that man Patrick Meritz an underdog because he's been skating since 2013 in Lausanne, Switzerland. But today, he's my dark horse here. Yeah, I'm going to go with German Kitov. He's been really solid this season. Definitely came into his own with all the training he's done this past summer. Wouldn't be surprised to see him make a semi or a final tonight. All right, with that, let's take a closer look at this track that we've been talking about. The naturalized track in Avescula snakes its way 630 meters down a ski slope, making it the longest and toughest track of the series. From the start gate, it's a straight shot to the first left-right snake turn, which lines the skaters up for the double tabletop. Racing down along the forest edge, the next obstacle follows a 90-degree left, a set of rollers called the waves. Then comes the tricky Nissan Chicane. Here racers will pick up speed for the next challenge coming at them fast and furious, the step up. Another sneaky snaking set of corners leads to the BF Goodrich rock drop. Stay on your skates here cause you'll need all the speed you can muster for the big floater and holding momentum for the last leg pumping lung burning 200 meters. Hopefully you're fit enough to manage this run more than once because to make the finals, you'll need to do it up to 10 times. Right, it's cold, it's snowing, and we're in Finland. Let's take a look at this beautiful track. I might as well go fast, see what kind of time I can get. I think I'm going to try to beat Nas and run on this one. Ooh, almost went down there. Little roller section. Got to get my speed going into the chicane turn, the Nissan chicane. A beautiful section here. A lot of chaos in the race is going to be coming into this corner. This guy trying to stay and miss this inside spot. All right, my favorite part of the track is step up jump and take it nice and smooth. Woo! Pretty, pretty. Rock drop. Nice little release. Here's a nice little air out jump. All right, beautiful. Okay, coming down this last turn section. Now is when the legs start burning because we got these rollers. One up, two up, and then skating uphill down the final stretch. And I'm going to make it, but I am out of breath. And that is that. Woo! Big racing, coming in hot, Red Bull Crash Ice Finland. Let's do this. Damn, Reed, that was a highlight run if ever there was one recorded a little bit earlier today. Our own Reed Whiting sitting next to me here. It's always fun to watch, and that was a really smooth run from you, actually. <laughs> what do you expect, Troy? I still got it. <laughs> still got it. After all these years. All right, we're going to take a look back at a highlight run from the round of 64 because 
This was incredible. Let's look at this here. Mirko Ladi, who is one of the favorites here, squeezes in behind Robin Worling in this race and actually gets out in front of him now. He's got the lead coming into the Nissan chicane. He goes down and he's dead last after he gets bumped out. And then we see that it is Jonas Kauto and Robin Worling out in front, but the great comeback from the big Finn just made the difference here. Kauto and Lati end up going on to the next round. I mean, that was an incredible comeback even for you, hey? Yeah, I would say the only person that's ever came back from that far back is Scott Croxel. He's done it multiple times. So that sets us up now with our look at the weather here. It is snowing, light snow. There's a little bit of sunshine peeking through the clouds, minus 13 degrees, 8 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, that snow plays a huge role on this course. You skated it earlier. Talk about how that affects the, uh, the guys that are going to be on course later. Yeah, just that little dusting of snow really covers up all this rutted up natural ice. I mean, there's going to be some small holes on there. Anything can happen with that ruts. That's why I've seen Nas go out in the future. We're right back to start with Nas now. Let's see how he does. All right, well, there we look at the first heat in the round of 32. Cameron Nas with Daniel Bergeson, and then John Fisher with Derek Cochimilio. I mean, this is a Canadian-American battle. Ray. Fisher's very good here because he knows those Five squeaky little lines, warning. but Cameron Nas, he's got to do well if he wants to move on. And again, a bit of a chunky start by the guys, but Cameron Noss leads out in front with Daniel Bergeson right there with him. Daniel's had some good starts, even though the ice at the and start Nas has been already. troublesome. And Noss goes down very early on. Let's see if he can pull a Mirko Lottie comeback as Daniel Bergeson and John Fisher goes through the Nissan chicane turn in one and two spots. Derek Cochimilio hits a rut, goes down. Here comes Nas around the outside, trying to find that good line. He is in a lot of trouble right now, though. He is way back, and Daniel Ferguson and John Fisher out in front. Nas, he is a great skater, a good glider, but as we've said, he has so many problems on this course. Through this tight section, this is an opportunity for him to try and catch up. John Fisher now taking the lead ahead of Daniel Ferguson. Cameron Nas trying to find it. He just doesn't have it here. And it looks like Cameron Nas is going to go out very early. And it's our first upset of the day, ladies and gentlemen. John Fisher and Daniel Bergeson will move on to the quarterfinals. And Cameron Nas, oh my goodness, the two-time world champion eliminated early from contest action here today in Eveskula, Finland on a track that he just doesn't like. And again, the track takes its toll on Cameron Nas. You heard Nas say it. He hates this track. And obviously, that was in the back of his mind from the start. We just were talking about the weather conditions, the snow covering the ruts, and that played a toll. It was almost like I was like, Mind reader there, no one was gonna happen at a time because that is exactly what happened. I don't think Nas has gone out in around a 64 ever, and let's watch this. He's just striding, coming around this corner, and he caught a rut and he is down. Now with the level of competition that is just rising in the past, maybe three, four years ago, Nas could have made a comeback there. The last year even. Yeah, but not with Fisher, Bergeson, Cachemilio. It's just not gonna happen. And Fisher and Berge really made a smooth run down. Nas did make a nice pass early. Kinda started to catch up, but it just wasn't enough. Wow, and that will completely affect this year's world championship. Losing those valuable points. Luckily for Nas, only two of the three Red Bull crash ices count. He had a thousand points in the first one. He will be able to redeem himself in Boston. Let's see if that will happen, which is going to be coming in next weekend. Interview coming up with Bree. All right, well, Cameron Nas is down with Bree McShane in our finish area. Cameron, bad luck. We heard at the start of the show that you hate this track. Just talk me through that from your perspective. Yeah, you know, I, I don't like this track a lot. Uh, it's tough. It's rough ice. Uh, it's natural, so it's not the easiest to skate on. And... I won't be shocked if that happens to more athletes today. So, yeah, I'm bummed, but uh, I enjoy Finland, and thanks for having us. There's a lot of snow falling on the track, and we're seeing some interesting starts. How is it at the top of the course? Top of the course is fine um, up until we double that first one. When you take that left, where I fell, that is the absolutely worst part of the track. So it's a bummer. Uh, it happens, and I guess shake it off. How do you refocus? 
coming away from this into Boston? Good thing I planned for this, kind of. I mean, I wanted to win here more than anything, but uh, I know this isn't my track. It's not my favorite, and uh, I'm looking forward to Boston. It suits me. It's technical, and good luck to the rest of the field. Thanks, Cameron. See you in Boston. Yeah, thanks. I have to ask myself if um, I'm preparing to lose at this one isn't the right attitude to have in this one for Cameron Nas because he's that guy who's always ready to win and push and fight and be there at the top of the game. Um, maybe he just gave up and knowing that it's a throwout one for him. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say it was that degree. There's no way he would ever go that far. But, you know, having any negatives in the back of your mind is going to cost you. Yeah. Next heat, Michael Julianello, German Tiedoff, who we mentioned earlier off of the show, and Patrick Mertz in this one, our two dark horses, along with Max Neymar. Morning. Getting ready to go in heat number two of the round of 32. Almost a pre out of the gate there by German Tiedoff. Michael Julianello, though, gets the whole shot. German Tiedoff right on his back, and Patrick Mertz doing well to try and stay tight with him. German Titov has been a really fun skater to watch lately because he has been doing so well. Patrick Mertz makes a nice pass around the outside into the Nissan chicane and now holds down second place behind Michael Julianello. A long track like this actually suits Julianello because he is a good skater and has those long legs. He's setting toe picks off up to be a good rock drop and leaves the game wide open for it looks like it's now Max Neymar that's moved into second place. German Titov in third. Julianello back there in fourth place. So Patrick Mertz in the lead at the moment. He's got to skate this one through all the way down. Here comes German Titov. He's going to fight, but he's just not going to have enough left to catch up with Max Neymar. So it is Patrick Mertz and Na Max Neymar. At least one of our dark horses makes it through to the next round. And an unfortunate toe pick off the BF Goodrich Rock Drop for Julianello puts him out of the game here along with German Tito. Max Neymar completely capitalized, and that's two races in a row. He comes from fourth to second, capitalizing on other people's mistakes. As you see right here, German Titov got a little tight trying to make a pass on Mers. Oh, yeah. Took himself out of the race. And then right here, that rock drop causes some difficulty. As this race goes on, we got bigger and bigger ruts off that drop. Obviously, that's going to play a role. We saw Marco Lago years ago fall in that exact same spot and take himself out of the race. Sorry to Iggy. Tough break. Same with Nas. Nas called it. More and more guys are going to be going down throughout the day. Yeah. Let's this see how this affects is, the rest of it. This course is beat to bits, but that's the way it is. Everybody's got to race on the same track. All right, next heat up in the gate, Luca Delago, who won here last year by default, unfortunately, but he did have another great win on the series. Ready? He's in there with Jim DePauli, Tristan Fusil, and Dan Whitty. This is a quick heat right here. Delago with a great start as we know him so well for. Tristan Duzerdil falls into second place with Dan Whitty actually in fourth place, not in third, as Jim DePauli is third right now. The big Swiss man is very fit and a good skater, so let's see if he can catch up with Tristan and Luca out in front. Duzerdil in second, Delago in first. Delago would really like to have a clean and fair win here. He even said it last year, winning the way he won here last year didn't feel as good as he done it himself. It was actually Mr. Pauly that did a little bit of a close look there, but he got right back up. But he's been relegated back to fourth place behind Dan Witte. Dan Witte trying to find a line. Delago so good at blocking, even though he's a small guy. Tristan Dujernil and... Oh, my goodness, that might come to photo finish. And there's Marco Delago giving a little bit of a grin because uh, he knew that was a close one. Yep, it's going to go to photo finish with Tristan Dujernil, Marco Delago, and it looked like Dan Witte coming across that finish line very close to each other. And the replays are going to have to be what we're looking at here when uh, our own Reed Whiting pulls it apart and gives his two cents work on it. Yeah, we've seen this yesterday in the LCQ and even in the round of 64. Guys are kind of giving up towards the finish. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen. This thing's under full review, but just from the start, you know, Luca Delago and Dujardil have a real nice start. Pinches off to Pauly in the first corner. Now, to me, I was thinking early on, you know, it's going to be a pretty easy goal for Dujardil. Delago coming down, but DePauly, this is kind of his spot. He tries to make a pass into first, loses it, goes down, which allows Witty to make a move. 
And then down the final stretch here, we just see Witty not giving up, skating all the way down. Everybody skating, but not quite as much, and it just doesn't look like it was enough. Let's watch this on the cross. Oh! oh. He might have actually been across before Dujer Dill. It looks that way, in fact. That is a slick, creative little move by Dan Witty. And if, in fact, it does go to Dan Witty, Dujer Dill is going to be kicking himself. Let's see what our judges say. That photo finish for me is Dan Witty, though. Yep. And it does look like that's the way it's going to go. Dujer Dill, he's going to be super disappointed by that one because he had such a good race. And he was right there with Marco Delago from top to bottom, or Luca Delago, excuse me. But uh, Dan Witty is going to make it through to the quarterfinals along with Luca Delago, both of them keeping their day alive. Yeah, and that was nobody's fault but his own. Dujardil gave that up. I and mean, we've seen some celebrations in the end, guys taking it a little too easy. With this field, you can never, ever stop. All right, next heat in the blocks. We've got Ryers, Michael Schmidt, Dujardil's teammate, Kyle Kroxall, former second world champion, morning. Derek Wedge, also a former world champion, and Jonas, Jonas Evakowski, who has been really, really solid, although he is maybe a bit outmatched here with three exceptional riders. Kyle Kroxall with an immediate lead there. Hakom Schmidt trying to find a sneaky little line on the inside, but Kyle Kroxall, such a big guy with long strides, hard to pass him. Derek Wedge has been in battles with Kyle Kroxall in the past as well. Derek Wedge, former world champion, looking for another one for himself, but at this point in time, Kyle Kroxall just opening it up. He's such a good glider when he gets on those flat sections of his skates. A couple of those pushes here and there, and it's hard to get past him because he's a big body. He's got that momentum on his side, but he also has fantastic edge control. Paco Schmidt in second place. Derek Wedge is going to be thinking, man, how do I get past this slick Frenchman? Oh, and he does it on the inside right before the finish line. So greasy, Derek Wedge gets it. And it's going to be Kyle Boxall and Derek Wedge. And just eking out Paco Schmidt in the finish line. And Derek Wedge is absolutely pumped with that second place finish. And Paco Schmidt knows it. He was like disappointed as well. So he and his teammate are both out early in the running here today in the round of 32. And it was the identical thing. I, I'm going to have to talk with these guys after the race because this is kind of ridiculous. You cannot quit. This is Red Bull crash ice, ice cross downhill. The feel is so tight. Everybody is good now, especially you got two world champions in this heat with you. You cannot take anything for granted, and he didn't. Early on, Pakomship makes a real nice pass on the inside of Derek Wedge right here. Cuts in the inside, outskates him into the Nissan chicane. Very solid. And then Wedge just was biding his time, coming down the whole course, staying real tight and makes a nice move on the outside to the inside. Pinches off, Pacom takes a victory and he is moving on to the quarters with Kyle Crocs. That was so Derek Wedge style though. He's really good at finding those little sneaky lines. He's a lot like uh, Fisher in that respect or, or Delago boys, you know, they're both, all of them really good at finding that line. And uh, Derek Wedge, his experience played a huge role there as he gets through with big Kyle Croxall. And those two guys couldn't be more opposite. Derek Wedge, he's small, he's shifty Kyle Croxall. He's big, he's uh, solid, strong, and a great skater. So interesting one right there. <laughs> All right, back up to the top here. And we have number five in the round of 32 with Scott Croxall, the reigning world champion. Dennis Kovalsilov in there with Antti Tolvanen, who we're loving at the moment. Boy, and Shane morning. Renault from Canada. Great start by Scott Croxall again. Squeezes to the front just in front of Antti Tolvanen. Antti Tolvanen, who you uh, mentioned had great starts, but tends to get a little bit wild towards the end. And my goodness, that was a heavy hit by, I think it was, Noble Silov, Dennis Noble Silov, Shane Renault trying to find the line to catch up with Andy Colvin. And Andy Colvin is a smart guy, it seems like. He has got a good line behind Scott Croxall. Don't know what graphic that was, but Scott Croxall out in front, Andy Colvin, and trying to get a little bit of drafting. He's a bit too far back to really properly draft off him, but he seems to be mimicking his line all the way down, which is not a bad idea if you're following a guy like 
Scott Croxall. And he now running out of uh, gas. And here comes our Canadian Shane Renault trying to get the last push to the finish line. And it looks like it's going to be Anthony Colvin and moving on to the quarterfinals along with Scott Croxall, who made that one look pretty easy. Nice run by Croxel there, very clean from top to bottom. We keep talking about Tolman, and he's up and comer. I mean, he's been around for a while, actually even since before I gave up the sport. But he looks really good. I mean, he's aggressive, pinching off Novel Cena out there in the first corner, staying on his feet through all the ruts. What I've noticed about Tolman is he's a tall guy, and if he puts on maybe five kilos of muscle mass, he will be a force to be reckoned with. Absolutely. No doubt he has a little ways to go to kind of compete at the top. But making a final last week in the core and now moving out of the corners, good work for him. And lucky he didn't stop a little earlier because yeah. Renault was coming in Renault hot. Renault was coming in hot. Shane Renault, he's not giving up. He's another guy that we got to keep our eyes on in the next couple of years. He has absolutely been improving from event to event. Scott Croxall, Anthony Tolvin, and moving on to the next round. Back to the top, Max Dunn on the right-hand side of your screen, Ricard Van Kije right next to him, and next to Ricard is Gabe Renault and then Yere Leto. Riders, I'm gonna say this ready? is a really evenly matched up heat here. Give it to Ricard Van Kije, though. Ricard trying to find that line in early, takes out Gabe Renault. And, uh, well, I might be a, a little bit wrong in my call here. And Ricard's got something hanging off his foot there. That might cause him problems if he steps on it. Yeah, that was his transponder there hanging off. Yeah. It's going to be a tough comeback. Those guys are way back. See, they got into it off the start. Took each other completely out of this race. Max Dunn and Yeri Leto with a huge lead over the other two at the moment, though. Yeah, it was just a bad call on my part. I mean, Ricard Van Vie has been having great starts all day long. This one, of course, just happened to be not so fantastic. Max Dunn looking real good, though. He's well out in front. Yeri Leto looking back. He says, OK, I'm going to just calm down a little bit. I don't need to freak out. And uh, Max Dunn doing the same, just keeping a close eye on his next closest competitor. Max Dunn and Yeri Leto are going to be moving on to the next round. I'm going to call that a boring race. <laughs> Sorry. It was exciting at the top with a little bit of, uh, of carnage, but not so much that it was it was crazy. Oh, and uh, oh, I thought he was going to push the button. Yeah, Ricard I think it's already under review. Oh, it is? Yeah, that's interesting. There was some stuff at the top. The reason the Van Wee went down is, as we're going to see here, Van Wee kind of had that corner, and Renault really kind of makes a really aggressive push in. Yeah, Van Wee was was protecting his line more than yeah, anything. Which he has a right to do, and I don't think the opening was there. Renault kind of made a little bit too aggressive of a, I'll call it a bulldog move, or a, a move Marco DeLago has made a time or two. It's a borderline DQ for Renault. Look at the start, though, from Ricard Van Villa. It was actually really good right there with Max Dunn. And it was that point that you're talking about right here at the squeeze. Yeah, he had, you know, the thing is, Gabe had nowhere to go. He was running himself into that corner and tried to actually move Van Wehe to make it happen. No changes by video judge, but to me that was borderline. Yeah. So Max Dunn and Yeri Leto will move on. And that means uh, Gabe Renault and Ricard Van Wehe are uh, out for now. And uh, I think Ricard is uh, giggling a little bit about it there. But uh, yeah, I like him. He's an old guy like me, so <laughs> nice to see that he's still running the gambit. Old like you, as in like 20 years younger? Yeah, okay, let's go that way. <laughs> Come on, Troy. <laughs> okay, he's not that old, let's, let's be honest. All right, back to the top of our uh, course here. Next heat in the blocks with Mirko Lati, Marco Delago, who you just mentioned earlier, and Dimitri Merlitschkin, who we saw in the training round earlier, or the training room earlier on, and Riders Jonas Kalto. Five second warning. Start. Mirko Lati right there with the Marco. He is very quick out of the gate. Mirko Lati's a big guy. Mirko reminds me a lot of a mix between Scott Roxel and Cal Roxel, actually, you can see here. A nice, easy going move into the Nissan Chicane to take the lead from 
Marco De Lago, Merlitzkin struggling a little bit, but this is a tight race. Oto right there with them. Wow, these guys are on top of each other. Couto's looking to make a move. He almost had a pocket to make it, but not quite. Now De Lago's pulling ahead. Yeah, De Lago's opening it up, but Mirko Lati, he's such a strong guy, and this is more or less his home course where they've had a lot of training in years past. He's got the lead right now, and he had this fantastic comeback, which we showed you in the review from the round of 64. He didn't want to have to fight through that, and, you know, with the guys that he'd be racing against uh, from this point on, I don't think that that comeback would have happened, but Marco De Lago and Mirko Lati are going to be moving on. Dimitri Merlitschkin looking really, really good these days, but just okay, didn't have enough gas in the tank, and Jonas Kauto is uh, also going to be eliminated in the round of 32 here today. Yeah, one thing I want to point out on the top here, I don't know if we're going to see it, it's right here. You're just seeing the power of Lati's stride as Marco kind of takes a look, and Lati just easily moves past him coming into that Nissan chicane. That is pure skating power right there. This guy has trained his bum off all summer long, and it clearly shows. Yeah, and his edge control is also exceptional. I mean, Marco's got great edge control, but then if you've got power and edge control, that is just a killer combination. Absolutely. Look at Marco, almost went down there. You can see how close Kauto and Merlitschkin were just battling to try to make a move. But obviously, not enough. Shameless plug, as always, by <laughs> as Marco always. Delago. And Merlitschkin was right there with Delago trying to say, I want to go. All right. The last heat in the round of 32 with Killian Brown, Marcus Duola, Pavo Klintrup, and Kevin Skibos. Riders ready! Here we go. Five second warning! Pavo Klintrup usually pretty fast out of the gate. This time, a couple of long, wide, bow legged strides gets him into that second position. Okay, but he had to do it from coming around the outside. Uola in third place, Killian Brown out in front. So Killian Brown from Switzerland showing his smarts on this course as they come through the Nissan chicane. This is a section here right now where we can see Auto, maybe, or Uola, excuse me, come through and, and challenge Lintra, but does do it. Killian keeping it nice and low over that tabletop, that double roller jump. And Killian Brown, Pavel Klintrup out in front, not going to give up. They're real close together, so they're going to push each other across that finish line for the one-two punch. And it's going to be Marcus Yola and Kevin Schibos coming across in three and four. The old-time bats, Brown and Klintrup, pretty much uncontested that whole run. Now, Wall, as we know, are really familiar with this track. He lives near the area. He has probably skated down this thing hundreds of times. And I do not understand why I didn't see him pushing hard in the skating, especially after the BF Goodrich rock drop. I mean, there's time there where you can really push, skate, and catch up before that kicker. And he did not even try. Well, he got connected with Killian Brown at the top there right out of the start because actually Killian and Walla had a bit of a better start than we've seen and Klintrup actually just took advantage of the two of them coming together and he slept through the middle for second place. See the rock drop here, everybody coming down real clean. Now that's the point where you gotta turn on the Jets. If you're in the third position, this is a point where you start gaining ground. Even to make a pass really late in the game, your speed build up from that rock drop down is where it all makes it work. All right, well, that is the round of 32 done and dusted. Coming up shortly, the quarterfinals. Well, with a population of 5 million and nearly 3 million saunas in the country, that translates to one per household on average. So it truly is the land of the sauna. It's an integral part of Finnish culture and something our athletes wanted to experience. I enjoy coming to Finland. It's just a beautiful place. Everything looks like a poster. Let's do this, a little sauna. Uh, 
good sweat here, boys. So let's get her heat. Fire this hot. <laughs> Probably the coldest water I've ever been in, but well worth it. And then you just jump back in the sauna, warm up, and sweat out again. It's a little bit weird to go ice swimming in this hot sauna, but that's cool that they respect our culture. The dinner, it's a traditional way to eat. The people used to eat like this like over 100 years ago. Very, very old school, only eating with a knife, and it was amazing. I loved it. Being friends with the top athletes in the sport, it's super cool to talk to them about different features. You know, sometimes you're struggling, sometimes you're taking things super well, and um, we kind of talk about it. If I have a chance to skate behind Scott in a practice session, I'll take notes, you know, and, and he'll do the same. Scott Croxall is looking very relaxed out there. I use the natural ice to my advantage. I think it suits my style. I love skating in the open runways and attack this course. It's a pretty simple track, so it really evens the playing field. Cameron Noss, who is out in front. Oh, and he goes down. down! I've had a bit of bad luck. I think I just hit the worst spots possible on these tracks a couple years, and it's just ruined my race here. Of course, I'm really keen to win this event in Ivaskala. It's my home track here, and uh, a lot of friends and family are cheering for me. I want to do super well, and. Hopefully you get that world championship title back again. It's going to come down to the wire and, and I'm excited to see what happens. All right, if you're uh, just joining us out there, we are in Iveskula, Finland for the Ice Cross Downhill World Championship. It is the ATSX 1000 Red Bull crashed ice from Iveskula. And if you follow along on the quest for the 2019 ATS World, ATSX World Championship, excuse me, on Facebook, at Red Bull Crashed Ice. On Instagram, you can enjoy our best shots at hashtag Red Bull Crashed Ice. And of course, you can always share those photos as well. Now we see Scott Croxall at the top in the rider's preparation area, just getting a little bit of energy before he gets ready for the quarterfinal action. And we're gonna take a look back at the one race here in the round of 32 that we were kind of expecting, but not quite this much. And it was heat number one with Cameron Nas, the two-time world champion, wanting to have it back. And here he gets eliminated really early, Reed. Yeah, unreal, especially because you're not going to think that's going to ever happen again after it's happened to him twice. Two out of the last three years, taking an unexpected fall due to some ruts. It happens again, round of 32. He tries to make a push in the comeback. Almost does, but it just wasn't enough. And it's almost like he's fallen in every quarter of this track since he's been skating here. This year it was at the top. The first year it was at the bottom. Last year it was in the middle. So it's just a bit crazy for him. Clearly this track's in his head, as we said. You heard him say at the beginning of this broadcast, I hate this track. Something subconsciously with those emotions can play a toll on him. And clearly it has. All right, well, it is a winter wonderland here right now. We've got a little bit of light snowfall, and as we mentioned off the top of our broadcast here today, that snowfall on the track does affect how these riders are able to skate on the track. It hides those ruts. It's hiding those really rough sections of the course. And if you look closely at your screen on the left-hand side there, you can see there's a little bit of drift left and right, and uh, the clean section through the middle where the skaters have actually managed to get through more or less without any drama. But a couple of corners here have really been causing problems. One is the Nissan chicane, where it is incredibly rutted up because the guys are coming in with a fair amount of speed and they're almost coming down to zero and having to restart their skating before the step up jump. And then of course, yeah, there you see it right there. And you can even see on your picture, the ruts right there by the Nissan sign. I mean, it's just unbelievable how crazy rutted that is up there, Reed. Yeah, on one hand, those ruts help you kind of lock in. On another hand, if you catch one wrong, <laughs> you're going on your face. Yeah, it's a tough one to, to manage through there. But, uh, you know, we're getting down to the, to the level where the guys are able to deal with this. And we're having the quarterfinals heat number one Riders, locked in the gate right now with Daniel Bergeson, John Fisher, Holy Patrick Merritt, and Max Neymark, who's been locked in. Daniel Bergeson with a great push out of the gate. John Fisher from the far side, squeezing in second place. Patrick 
Bad sitting in fourth place now behind Nymark. Nymark, who's been a real smart player today, but also a little bit lucky. We always say you gotta be lucky to be good and good to be lucky. Well, Max Nymark did both as he's managed to stay away from some carnage that he's going on the racing day. Right now, Daniel Ferguson, nice and clean over that double. John Fisher right there with him. John Fisher, a very adept skater here, super adaptable, and is able to manage on courses like this, as well as courses that are quite technical, and he makes a great pass on the inside there of that tight little S-band. And Fisher takes over the lead with some great gliding. He probably got a really flat cut on his skates. And now, Max Neymar trying to push and fight with Danny Bergeson. That's going to be a battle right to the end. And both of them go down, leaving it wide open for Patrick Mans. And I'm pretty sure we're going to see a protest there from Danny Bergeson. Absolutely. And I don't know if the protest should be the other way. It looked to me like Neymar made a move, and Berge actually grabbed his breezer and held him down the stretch. But we got to see a different camera angle, because I don't think yeah. that's something Bergie would have done unless he felt wrong before. Great start by Bergeson coming into this first corner. Fish takes a commanding position coming around, pinches off Mers, who is immediately relegated into fourth place. Your dark horse, Mers, looked real solid until this heat. Now, Fisher, really in control, slowly gains speed and actually makes a nice pass on Bergeson after this little kicker. See, Maybe coming around on the inside here. Staying low definitely made that happen. Now, Nymark, let's watch this. Nymark is coming in through this final section on the inside of Bergeson, makes a move. Now you see Bergeson reach back in front. I don't know. I'm, yeah, I mean, okay. really. That's a tough one. It looked like uh, maybe both of these guys were getting a bit handsy, but the problem is as uh, our picture is we're seeing Bergy reach around and grab a bit of material on the front of Nymark's freezer, like you, you said. Okay, so we and can see there. it right there. There was no DQ by Nymark. That was completely Bergeson. Nymark had a door. Bergy left it open. Nymark went in, and that was all Bergy. Dirty move, Bergy. I'm sorry, man, but that was all on you. Took Nymark out of the race, and lucky for your dark horse, yep, he's in the semis. Open for Patrick Merritt, who is going to move on to the semifinals. Could be the first time you've had a better pick than me in this, <laughs> the history of this. <laughs> well, to be fair, I did help with both of those picks, so uh, <laughs> I win either way, right? <laughs> true, true, true. So still under review, but uh, you know, like we always say, it's not going to really make a difference because the two guys that came across the finish line one and two fair, you know, they're going to move on, and the protest is only about perhaps a little bit of pride. Yeah, the person who should be the most pissed off is Max Nymark to me. I mean, he would have easily been moving on to the semis, would have been his first semi-final. Uh, made a good move, in my opinion, on the inside of Bergeson. And, and interestingly enough, Bergeson posted that protest, but he's the one that got DQ'd because the judges looked at that and they probably said the same thing that you did. Yeah, you which is completely a right call by our judges. We don't agree with them very often. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's a tough one, but uh, you know, that's battling right to the very end. Fortunately, it just wasn't exactly full on fair. Well, we got a comment on that mustache and fish rack. Kind of <laughs> creeps me out a little I'm bit. Looking you, at he's him. looking like El Chapo. It's yeah. the funniest coincidence. All right, quarterfinal heat number two. Luca the Lago in there with Kyle Croxall, Derek Wedge, and Dan Whitty now. The Croxalls and the, uh, the Lagos have had battles with each other, and uh, Luca, he's a little guy compared to Kyle, is right next to him in the gate. So it'll be interesting to see what's going on in this one. And you can see the look on Marco De Lago's face. I wonder what is going through his mind right now. Dan Witte looking really good in that last heat, so uh, hopefully he can take some of that confidence through into this heat right now. Quarterfinal heat number two. Here we go. Ready? Play second warning. Start by Luca Delago, squeezes right in front of Kyle Croxall. Derek Wedge in third place, Dan Woody sitting back and forth. Now I think maybe Kyle Croxall might be thinking, okay, I'm gonna skate this one as fair as I possibly can. Oh, look what's happened here though. Derek Wedge sneaks inside of Kyle Croxall through the Nissan chicane. Luca Delago out in front with a nice solid lead and it's gonna be elbow to elbow for Derek Wedge and Kyle Croxall right now. 
Derek Wedge, not as big as Croxall. They came through together from the last heat, round of 32. And right now, Kyle Croxall, great move on the inside there, just to squeeze off Derek Wedge. Opens it up through this section of rollers, trying to catch up with Luca DeLago, who's out in front. It's going to be a nice battle right to the finish line for Luca DeLago and Kyle Croxell. They'll cross the finish line one and two, and that means those two guys who have had battles in the past two years are going to be moving on to the semifinals together. Wow, that was a fun one to watch, especially with Derek Wedge passing Kyle Croxell, and then Kyle Croxell doing the exact same thing to Derek on the inside of that tight little s band I got a comment on Luke on this race. Even though it's clearly his race the whole way down, he made some really nice moves on that step up. You're seeing everybody jump it. He ran up that thing, which I think is just slightly a faster move. Really did well over the roller section, stayed low. I mean, really clean, looking really good for him in the future. Obviously, Kyle Croxell made a sick move on Wedge. Coming down the stretch, just kept his momentum. He tried to make a pass here. Wedge pinched him off. And it wasn't until after the rock drop, you can see Kyle slowly gaining momentum, picking a line to the outside, and shortly after the rock drop, he makes a nice pass on the inside of Wedge. Yeah. And from there, it was all Delago Croxel moving on to the semis. That was a beautiful s band pass. Marco Delago there in the riders area, getting ready for his next heat. Uh, just breathing a sigh of relief for his brother going up against the big Kyle Croxel there. So. Uh, we're going to see a Croxall and a Delago in a semifinal together. Let's see if uh, that happens a little bit further on. Meanwhile, heat number three in the quarterfinal, Scott Croxall, the younger brother of Kyle Croxall, up against Riders Max Dunn, Andy Colvinen, and Yeri Leto. One second warning! Just the intensity of his start position there is so wild to watch. Scott Croxall gets up the game fast off Max Dunn in second place now Andy Colvin in third place this is where we're gonna see if Andy Colvin has the wherewithal to try and catch up to the guys out in front Scott Foxall quick look back as he heads through the Nissan chicane and Andy Colvin with a great pass on Max Dunn to get past him through that chicane that is really difficult to do at the best of times and that ice conditions there as they all come over the VF footage rock drop nice and clean Andy Colvin in right shoulder to shoulder with Max Dunn right now Let's see if he can hold him off. Max Dunn pushing hard to try and catch up with Tolvanen. Tolvanen doing a great job to hold off the American. Scott Croxall well out in front as he keeps himself in contention here. Andy Tolvanen keeping that block line, pinching everybody off in that second place. And it's going to be Andy Tolvanen moving on to the semifinals for Scott Croxall. Oh, and we've got a protest by Maxwell Dunn. And I don't know where he would protest here, but he looks like it's turn number three. And it's under protest by Max. Well done. So we'll see if that actually is the case when we get the review. I'm sorry, boys. These protests are getting a little bit ridiculous. These are kind of snowflakey. I didn't hurt see the protest here, either. Yeah. There was nothing there. Um, this is part of the race. There's going to be bumping. There's going to be touching. Obviously, if it's extreme like the race before with Burgess, and that's a DQ, but there was nothing here. Let's just watch it. Great start by Dunn and Croxel. Croxel just gets the best, but Auntie hangs back. Nice and composed and sets up. Now, we can say at times, Auntie has been kind of a dirty rider. Um, I can't say he's the cleanest guy in the world, yeah, but, but I have I didn't not see seen anything much. Out untoward in this one, to be honest with you. No, not at all. Now, it could have happened where we couldn't see right there, so that camera angle we had did not show anything around that corner. I don't think they were close enough to get a push or anything in there. No, it looks to me like. Ah, Tough to say. Yeah, we're going to need another camera angle from behind the bridge at that Nissan chicane in order to really see what happened. Looked to me like Dunn got a little too much to the outside there, which can happen if a guy is trying to pinch on the inside of you. Tough call. We'll see what the judges. I'm sure they had a different camera angle. We can kind of see what's going on with this one. The cameraman, Mike, almost got body checked by Dunn as he put the brakes on to get that button as quickly as possible for his protest, so let's see if that's the case. And there you go, Andy Colvin and Scott Croxall, one and two, and there's the uh, immediate breaking by Maxwell Dunn. Be interesting to see the other camera angles on this. Absolutely, it would be a tough one. I mean, 
under that bridge is really hard because that's almost like a dead zone. So we have two cameras looking into that location, but not really anything through that corner. So, you know, if you're going to be dirty anywhere, it's that spot. Not that I'm promoting them. Yeah, so we see here, Auntie's definitely gaining on him. I think what's happening, he's trying to take the inside position here. Yeah, yeah like, I think it just, he, he just had too much juice, uh, Max did, and he went too far to the outside, and Anti took advantage of the fact that he's a slighter rider and was able to get that harder edge to the inside. That's what I saw there. The protest is going to be denied. Yep. Scott Crocks, Anti Toivonen, on to the semis. There you go. Dunn's going to be really disappointed by that because he's been racing so well the last few years. Um, but uh, this time he is out, and we go back to the top with Mirko Lati, Killian Brown, Marco Delago, and Pavel Kuntrup. Well, this is a good heat ready? right here as well. And uh, Mirko Lati expected Five to be well. Marco Delago, former world champion. Let's see if he can keep it together. Great start by Mirko Lati and Killian Brown as Killian squeezes in there right behind Mirko. But Marco Delago does a great job to get in there and try and squeeze Killian out. But Killian squeezes him back out and Marco Delago ends up going back to fourth place. Passing non-stop. Yeah, this, this is a, a, a busy heat up in the top through the Nissan chicane in the big G out towards the step up jump. Mirko Lati out in front with Killian Brown right on his tail. Killian Marco looking good down. and Marco goes down just before the BF Goodrich rock drop. So he's going to have to catwalk his way down there. And here comes Pavel Klintrup and he makes a great pass on the inside but goes down. Pavel Klintrup loops out or loses an edge just as they go through that S bend to Killian Brown. He almost had the pass on Brown. But Brown managed to stay on his feet and stay in front. So that means it's going to be Mirko Lati and Killian Brown. And I didn't see anything in that race that would warrant a protest. And if anybody does protest, that's going to be quite interesting. And the battler in Marco Delago comes down and tries to push as hard as he can to get third place, at least for the points. Under review again. This interesting. Non-stop reviews this race. The judges are really keen on what's going on in all these corners. Now off the start, you see great start by Mirko Lati. Actually, all four of these guys really looking good. Nice Composed solid start. coming to these corners. Now coming down here, we see multiple passes. Earlier on, Marco made a pass on Killian. Killian Brown makes a pass on Marco right here. Now we see this Klintrup hanging back. Now what can happen when you get two guys battling in front of you? They're always losing speed. So Klintrup was very smart in to just maintain his control and take advantage of a mistake there by Marco Delago. And then he even starts to gain on Killian right here through that roller section. But Killian, not gonna let it happen. Klintrup goes down in that corner. Oh. Now that is where- I wonder if that's where the review is. There might have been a little push in there. It's really tough to say. It didn't look like there was any pushing to me from uh, from my perspective here, but uh, it's about the judges and their video review of the thing here. So we'll see if there is a DQ or not. Nope, no changes, so it's going to be Mirko Lati and Killian Brown moving on to the semifinal. So we have our semifinal set. Heat number one, uh, DeLago, Luca DeLago, Kyle Croxall, John Fisher, Patrick Mertz. Heat number two is going to be Scott Croxall, Antti Tolvanen, Mirko Lati, and Killian Brown. Former Olympic skater Anais Moran trained hard over the summer to take the next step in women's ice cross downhill, but the Swiss sensation made the classic rookie mistake of a premature celebration at the finish line in Yokohama. Oh my goodness, oh the last push by Casey Rooney and I think that just took it away from Anais and she can't believe what's just happened. You know when you're first the whole way you think okay I can be second and still be to the next round so I was maybe too confident or too happy so I didn't push till the end. That was my mistake because the other girls did that. It was really frustrating because I felt just stupid that I've done that. That was the first and the last time. It won't happen again. It was really special to take part of the Olympic Games 2010, especially the opening ceremony was amazing. 
figure skating was very tough training. Like we had no life beside the ice skating, but it was wonderful to skate on music and having the crowd cheering for us. And I feel like this is almost the opposite. It's so much fun during uh, training. Everyone is very friendly and uh, happy to be here. And uh, during the race, then it's tough. <laughs> Especially Amanda is never doing a mistake, so it's like you have no place for breathing. During the race, you just have to go, 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 and that's what they do, and that's why they're the best. I feel like this sport could be a part. I could imagine myself being in the Olympic Games. I was, but for crash ties, I would love that. So as we heard, Anise Morand is never gonna make that mistake again, and we have seen her racing quite well today in the earlier quarterfinal rounds. We're gonna take a quick look back at the quarterfinal heat number three. This one has Amanda Trunzo, Maxi Flint, Victoria Senotrusova, uh, and Tamara Mavison. Now this was a really good heat. We saw some great battles going on here. And we see that Tamara Mavison there in the green and orange had a good position there. She was sitting in second place behind Amanda Trunzo and got passed here on the way down by uh, by Maxi Plant and there was a great battle going on between the two of them. It really it came right down. Trunzo dominated this one all the way down, Reed, but it came right down to the finish line. And this was the discussion that we were having earlier on. You can see here this one goes to photo finish, but because Mavison came across that finish line and went down immediately, the judges made a call that it was out of control and therefore dangerous for the other riders, and she got disqualified. Too bad for her, but uh, Maxi Plant would move on. Yeah, good, good heat by the women. Looking forward to seeing Truns on these final heats if she can repeat as a champion in the basket. Yeah, she's been so strong here. Her skating is just incredible. Uh, really, you know, Anais Moran can definitely do a push to get up to her. Jacqueline Legere currently sitting atop the standings is right there with her, but Amanda Trunzo is head and shoulders above so many of the other athletes. As we look at the semi-final heat number one for our ladies, Anis Moran, Jacqueline Legere, Tamara Kaya, and Amadine Condroyer. Anise Moran with a great start to get that early lead, opening it up on Jacqueline Legere in second place, Tamara Kaya in third, Amandine Condroyer sitting back there in fourth, battling hard, and she makes a pass on the inside of Tamara Kaya to take third. Jacqueline Legere trying to catch up with Anais Moran. Anais Moran, super solid out of the start, very good skater. Obviously, her edge control and ability to skate is right there because of her history in figure skating. It's about the fitness and about her drive to get across that finish line. And you can see she is motivated to try and do as well as she can. A couple of these sections where she's gliding, though, might be advantageous for her to try and take a couple of strides. But you've also mentioned that it's tough in some places to take a stride that it actually slows you down. Yeah, you never know, especially with all these ruts. It's kind of questionable where you should stride and when you shouldn't. Sometimes it can slow you, sometimes it can speed you up. This time, it didn't matter. Moran, Jacqueline Legere looking really solid going into the finals. And I have to ask myself if this isn't a, a for Moran, a, a, a mental victory against a skater like Jacqueline Legere, who has a pedigree, who has the world championships back to back, who is expected to be among the top and she beat her out of the gate and around the corner and basically dominated that race. And I, you know, I also have to ask myself if this is maybe not Anise Moran throwing the gauntlet down against Jacqueline Legere and the other ladies. Yeah, well, I mean, coming into the final, you know, if you're caught back behind two people, your chances of capitalizing any mistake or winning are very difficult. So passing Legere is step number one in beating or possibly beating Amanda Trunzo. Riders, ready? We are back at the top here. Five Trunzo, our favorite, morning. but don't count out Miriam Trepanier. Absolutely not. She's had some great starts lately, but Maxi Plant was good in the last heat. And Mario Clemola, I believe that's supposed to be the Lisa Clemola. We'll see. Amanda Trunzo looking for the lead. She's got it now. Miriam Trepanier right there with her. Maxi Plant coming in third. They're very close together. They're only about a meter and a half apart of each other through the Nissan chicane here. 
This is going to be a, a big test right now for Miriam to try and catch up with Amanda Tronto, excuse me. Over the BF Goodrich Rock Drop. Big lead now by Tronzo Trapanier. Navigated that very well. Maxi plant right behind Trapanier. Looking for that inside line. Kanye wants to get the final. Oh, it's a big battle. They're getting handsy with each other up there. Maxi Plant moves into second place, but oh, I think there's going to be a call on this one as Trunzo takes a fair line on the inside of Maxi Plant. She's going to get this one. They might take it to review. I don't think there's going to be an athlete protest. That was just a good battle. That was a really wow. good battle with the girls. Fair battle, you know, they both made passes on the inside of each other. Obviously, your hands are going to get in the end round. It is under review by video judge, but I don't think any of the outcomes are going to be changed there. I don't think so either. It was Maxi Plant that was actually getting in there on the inside with her hands and holding onto the shoulder of Miriam Trapanier. So I think that one will definitely go to Miriam no matter what. But look at that. Now, Miriam almost had Amanda Trunzo pinched on the outside, but she just had too much momentum, got squeezed out. Yeah, great start by Trepanier, but like here we see that battle at the bottom. So Maxi comes on the inside, makes a nice move, but Miriam does not give up and keeps pushing and actually passes her right back. Now, what's crazy about that, this bottom section is not an easy place to make moves. Um, so it was really interesting to see a double pass back and forth between these two. Great battle, look at this, love it. I think the first the first grab was actually on the part of Maxi Plant when she put the sh hand up on the shoulder of Miriam. Yeah, and you can see there, it is uh, confirmed. It's going to be Amanda Trunzo and Miriam Trapanier moving on to the women's final. All right. Getting down to the wire now as we aim to the top of our course and get our men ready for the semifinal heats. Semifinal heat number one will have Luca Delago, Kyle Croxall. We saw them battling each other quite well in the earlier round. John Fisher and Patrick Mertz. Patrick Mertz, my dark horse, right doing well ready. today. Let's see if Luca Delago can hold off Boy, the press second from the big man right there, Kyle Croxon. Again, a great start by Delago. Kyle early. Absolutely fantastic. Gets the early lead. John Fisher right on top of Kyle Croxall. And as we've seen all day long, John Fisher just seems to have a knowledge of this course that's uncanny. Almost like he can read the lines better than anybody else. Through the Nissan Chicane. Oh, but I spoke too soon. I think I might have jinxed the fish as John Fisher loops up, goes down at the Nissan Chicane over the BF Goodrich Rock Drop. It is Luca DeLago and Kyle Crossall with about an eight meter lead on Patrick Mance. Patrick Mance is going to have to do some work to catch up with Luca. Now he's been passed by Kyle Crossall, who is in the lead. Luca DeLago in second place. Patrick Mance in third doing well but he has just got too much space to fill between him and Luka Delago goes down hard and first into the boards and that is a toe pick of epic proportions right at the finish run and there comes John Fisher across the finish line in fourth place disappointing for Fish because he's been solid in the heat uh, all day today in the past years but a great job by Kyle Croxall and Luka Delago and a very fair race considering the history between these two Absolutely, like this was clearly Delago, Croxel the whole way. Both Murs and Fisher made some mistakes, which gave them no chance to be involved. But let's look back at last year. You know, this final, Croxel actually finished first, but was DQ'd, which gave Luke Delago the championship. I'm sure Kyle wants that back by making that beautiful passer at the end. He's showing that he can make moves in Delago with no problem. Luke is going to take note on that and probably be pushing harder in the final. Things are shaping up really nice here to be a controversial final with Kyle obviously looking to earn back what he lost in 2018. All right, well, here we go with the second semifinal. This one has Scott Croxall, Miracle Lati, two big skaters, Killian Brown and Antti Tolvin.
And again, Scott Proxall with a great start, but Mirko Latni right in his back pocket. And Scott Proxall knows he has got a solid big skater with uh, a knowledge of this course like no one else. Mirko Latni pushing hard to try and catch up with Scott Proxall. Gillian Brown right on top of Mirko Latni, Antti Polkinen trying to find the line for fourth place right now as they go through that long line to the step up jump and around this little S bend. This one's not so tight towards the VF30 Prokhorov. Nice clean run so far by Scott Proxall. And again, looking very relaxed out there. Mirko Latni saw a line, but he just didn't have the momentum to get there. Battling against the power in Scott Proxall's legs and the experience of racing so many times here on this course. It's going to be a huge battle right to the end. Scott Proxall puts his leg into the boards just lightly. Killian Brown making a last minute push, but it just wasn't enough. And Scott Croxall and Mirko Latti are going to go to the final. Antti Tolvin and Killian Brown will see them perhaps, or well, if we do that consolation final, we'll see them skating for positions five, six, seven, or eight. Well, this sets up that controversial final we always look for. Only this time it's a little mismatch. We have two Croxels versus one Delago <laughs> with Mirko Lati coming into the mix. Each one of these guys could succeed as we saw Mirko Lati able to keep up with Scott and actually cross the finish line together. Anything can happen going forward. All right, well, there you see that last push to the end. Scott Croxall grimacing, Mirko Latte right there with him. Killian Brown, he did his best. He just is one of those guys that never gives up, but he had about a meter's distance between him and Mirko Latte, so it wasn't enough, and it is. Scott Croxall and Mirko Latte, and our finals are set up for the men and women. All right, so if you ever wondered what it's like to be a rider, be on board with one of these athletes, we're gonna give you a couple of POV highlights here from earlier on. First one up is on board with Derek Cochimilio from Canada, and you can see him chasing down Gabe Andre, Ricard Van Vija, and out in front there is Cameron Nas, I believe. You can see the distance that he's got on Derek. I mean, just an incredible distance there, and the speed that you see through these sections is just amazing. Uh, I do believe that we've just jumped boat over to Daniel. No, this is still Derek Cochimilio. I think this is uh, when Cameron went down. And now here we are. Now, sorry, that was just Daniel Bergeson that we saw. And now we should be on board with Amandine Pondroyer because that is Anise Moran in front of her. And you can see Anise looking very solid, great edge work finding the line through that chicane, the Nissan chicane, and heading down towards the step up and just opening up the gap even more. So great job by all of our POV cameras. Thank you very much. At the top of our course, we have what's known as the small final, or the consolation final locked in the gate. This will determine places five, six, seven, and eight at our event here. And there you see Tamara Kaya. She's in the mix along with Maxi Plant, who uh, tried her best, but just couldn't quite get through there. Amandine Condorier is in there along with Mariut Plemola. We just have a little communications problem on course. So Riders we have ready? And now it looks like we're going to go ahead. Five second warning. United. Good start by Tamara Kaya, who takes a commanding lead early on with Maxi Plant right behind her. Amandine Condorier sitting in third place. And the Frenchman, the French woman, excuse me, goes down with a Tofik landing on her front and leaves a wide open for Maxi Plan and Tamara Kaya heading towards that Nissan chicane. Remember, this is the battle for positions five, six, seven, and eight here in Eveskula, Finland. 
at our ATSX 1000 Red Bull Crash Dice event. Over the BF Goodrich Rock Drop, Marikaya opening up the gap on Maxi's plant. Oh, Maxi going for a huge air. That might have cost her that second position in this race as here comes Maria Tamola pushing hard to try and make a pass in these last few meters. Tamara Kaya left wide open. Mariu Kamola trying to find position. Little toe pick there stays on her feet, but it looks like it's gonna be Maxi flying across the finish line in second place. Mariu in third, so that means Tamara Kaya will get fifth place here today. Maxi plant six, Mariu Kamola seventh, and when Amandine does come across that finish line, she will be eighth for the event here in Yavescula. Yeah, great run there by Kaya. I mean, she looked just flawless from top to bottom. I mean, she is so close to that top echelon of girls we're seeing in the final. Yeah. You know, she's just right on the edge. And, and she had a for, great start. Yeah, great start. For the most part, she keeps up with them. Just little things that are the difference. So she's right there. Look at Maxie just going for it, having some fun in that round. Beautiful jump, couldn't quite stay on her feet, but she still held it together. Boy, for if the she landed that one, it would have been like your jump in Japan. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely massive. Break your back. All right, folks. Women's final. Anais Moran has shown flashes of brilliance throughout this event. Amanda Trunzo, of course, wants to have that title back. Jacqueline Legere currently in the overall lead with Miriam Trapagne, always dangerous. There's Miriam. Her gate starts have been very, very good lately, and we've seen earlier on her transition game has improved. Jacqueline Legere, no fear out of this woman at all, currently leading in the overall rankings. Then we have Anais Moran. Swiss sensation who came from Olympic figure skating to ice cross downhill and our reigning champion Amanda Trunzo ready to go here for the final for our women in the vestibule. Look at that focus on Ran. <laughs> she is ready. Riders ready. A good start by all four of these women, and Anise Moran squeezes out Jacqueline Legere for second place just behind Amanda Trunzo. Anise Moran with great edge work, and Jacqueline Legere is, oh, she's struggling a little bit now. She's well back and forth behind Miriam Trapagne through the Nissan chicane. Amanda Trunzo solid on those edges, solid skating. Anise Moran right there. Keeping a close eye on the line. We have Goodrich Rock Drop. Trunzo easily manages it. Anise Moran right there as the two front runners open up a huge gap on Amanda, or excuse me, on uh, Jacqueline Legere and Miriam Trapagne. Surprised to see Jacqueline Legere so far back. Amanda Trunzo, a nice lead now on the rest, but Anise Moran not giving any space at all to Amanda Trunzo, pushing hard across the finish line. Oh my goodness, how close was that? Anise Moran keeps pushing hard to the finish. Miriam Trapagne loops out just at the finish line, and there comes Jacqueline Legere. That's a disappointing run for Jacqueline, the back-to-back -back world champion. Trunzo, the reigning world champion, wins this one here. So she's got two ice cross downhill ATSX 1000 Red Bull Crash Nice wins to her name this season, and that is a huge lead now. And uh, what I'm really impressed by is how fantastic Anise Moran looked at that race. Yeah, I mean, I, I could tell Erland, she was focused, didn't even look at the camera line. She wanted this. She almost took Trunzo off the start, but Trunzo pinched her off in this corner. You can see the reason Jacqueline got relegated to the back, she took a little fall before the roller section right here, popped back up, but even just that minuscule up and down will cost you big time. But like you said, Troy, what's really interesting here was Anais like literally losing this race by a skate. Like it just shows the level she has come to getting better and better. She is gonna be the one to really push on Trunzo in the future, along with Jacqueline Legere and Marion Trapagne. So all four of these women, just extraordinary racing. 
All right, and it looks like we're going to go down to Bree McShane, who is in the finish area with Amanda Trunzo. Amanda, your third win here in Finland. Was that the toughest win yet? Yeah, absolutely. That was a really good heat. You have uh, the top four women in the world right there. So to come out on top, I can't be more proud. NAE is obviously qualified first. What were you telling yourself going into that race? Yeah, you know, I love racing against people more than the time trials, so I don't try to focus on that too much, but she's a great racer, put up a good time in time trials, and I knew I needed to beat her. We've seen a lot of carnage of this on this course today. Just how tough is it on that natural ice? Yeah, the natural ice is tough, or sorry, is tough, um, but it's tough for everyone. Uh, there's ruts out there everywhere, but you got to avoid them and push through. Next, we go to Boston. What are your expectations going into that last race? Yeah, my expectations for myself are always to come out on top, but uh, in front of a home crowd in there, I'm really excited and happy to be on U.S. soil. Thanks, Amanda. Well done. Thank you. All right, so right away, Amanda's going to receive the trophy for winning here in Eveskula, the ATSX 1000 Red Bull Crash Dice, and another 1,000 points and three wins here in Eveskula. That is incredible consistency from the young American. She's done a great job. And uh, with that, and the fact that Jacqueline Legere ended up in fourth place here today, that means she should take over the overall rankings. We'll take a look at the rankings here in a second, but we're getting ready with our men. So we have the small final, the consolation final, Killian Brown, John Fisher, Antti Tolvanen, and Patrick Merz. I'm gonna be rooting for Antti on this one for some reason or another. I'm going with Fish. And look at that, sneaks out to the lead. Can he hold off a very strong contingent of riders behind him? Killian Brown right there blocking out Fish a bit. Antti Tolvanen just wagging those legs as much as he can. Killian Brown looking pretty relaxed behind Antti as they head into the Nissan chicane. Killian, as we mentioned, is a very intelligent competitor. He knows where to look for those passing opportunities, but he's got to also be wary that he's got Patrick Mance now in third place on his tail. Tolvanen looking for the block out here. Puts a hand up. Oh, there's a little bit of that cheap play that you talked about earlier, Reed, as he is trying to hold back the guys. He's got his arms whoa, out there. Whoa. I think there is just a lot of hands going everywhere. on. It's just a grab fest out there. Antti Tolvin and out in front. He goes down, and I think that right there is a little bit of karma playing a role. And it's going to be John Fisher winning this one. Good call on your part, Reed Whiting. My boy. As he comes across the line in first place. Gillian Brown in second place. Antti Tolvanen gets up, battles for a third place. But the judges might look at this and see if everything was fair out there. So, we'll see. <laughs> There's a lot of brotherly love going on at the bottom, and I don't know what. <laughs> Everybody just touching and feeling each other. Yeah. Like, it's a little weird for me, especially with that mustache fishing support. Yeah. But great race top nasty. to bottom. I mean, Auntie looked really good. You were talking about him earlier. He's come a long ways. Early battle with Fish and Braun. And look at Murs taking advantage of that and coming on the inside, making a real nice move. These guys were just all, everything back and forth. Now, right here, you see everything kind of start. Yeah. Auntie's really pushing out Braun because Braun had more speed. Murs kind of goes down, and here we go. They're pushing it. Now, Fisher's just in the back, keeping his speed and trying to stay out of the mess, which allows him to get in position to make this final move as everybody is just pushing on each other. Auntie's trying to take out Killian. Auntie's trying to take out Fish. Dude, you can't take out everybody, and like you said, <laughs> and karma. And he's got the condor wings going out there to block the course. Karma comes calling right here as Auntie goes down, and Fisher makes a move. We just got word Auntie is DQ'd anyways. Yeah. Beautiful heat there. Congratulations to John Fisher on the fifth place finish. So Auntie's got these great starts. He's got this great upper course capability, and then for him, it's just about the bottom half of the course. He needs to train on those bottom half of the courses, so he doesn't need to spread the wings and try and block the guys out. Protecting your line is one thing, getting grabby is another thing, so Antti Polvinen will actually be disqualified, and then he'll go down to fourth place. So that means Fisher, Brown, and Mertz will be 
on the podium, or not on the podium, excuse me, we'll have five, six, seven in Anthony Colvin and we'll be in eighth place here. Speaking of the podium, we're gonna get back up to the top for our final. And what a list of athletes in this final. Scott Croxall is in there. Mirko Latti is in there. Luca Delago is in there. And Kyle Croxall is in there. Look at this. Scott Croxall, far left hand side, or Kyle Croxall, far left hand side. Scotty Croxall, far right hand side of your screen there. And there he is, the big man. Former world champion, Kyle Croxall. Very tough to pass when he's in the front. The speedy, the sneaky, the greasy, Luca Delago. He won it here last year by default. He wants a clean win this year. Mirko Lati, the new guy who's been racing in the juniors for a while and one of the favorites and a fan favorite here for sure. And then, of course, the reigning world champion, two-time world champion, Scott Croxall. He wants a third. This is his opportunity with Cameron Noss missing from this lineup. with a nice run to start things off, but made a big mistake in that Nissan chicane where he just lost his footing in all that snow-covered ruts. Yeah, that was the same spot that actually Mirko Lati went down earlier. Lucky for Mirko's in the earlier rounds, he was able to regain himself. You know, it's interesting, I, Kyle Croxel has dominated that last stretch coming off the rock drop. He has really been able to gain speed, and you saw it coming early. I mean, let's look at this from the start. So Scott gets a great start, as expected. Mirko right behind him, Luca coming in third. Now Kyle's in fourth position at that point, keep in mind, but he always has a way of staying composed. He makes an early pass right here on Luca. So that's number one pass coming around this corner. He comes to the inside, skates his way out. So now he's got his brother and Lati in front. Coming through the Nissan chicane, Scott takes a bad line, gets caught in the ruts, and goes down. Tough break for Scott, but that completely opened the door for Mirko to take this thing home. Now you can never count out Kyle Crocs, so the momentum he gains on this track is incredible, especially after the rock drop. That is where he makes it happen. There's Scott oh, going that down. that rough section right there took him Tough out. Tough break. Those ruts are aggressive right there. So let's follow this. Scott, no chance to come back. We got Lati and Kyle coming towards the rock drop. And this is where we slowly see Kyle making a move right there on the inside. And Lati could not do anything. Congrats to Kyle Croxell. Earning it back, as I said before, he wanted this bad after yeah. what happened last year. And he's got a good inside line there on Mirko Lati. Just passed him, and that was boy greasy as well. And then Luca Delago has that third place. Great job. And you can see here, just fantastic control by Kyle Croxell, who is with our sideline reporter, Bree McShane, in the finish. Kyle, we knew that you wanted this one badly. Is this a sense of redemption after what happened to you last year? Yeah, it was uh, bad luck for my part last year, but uh, 
you know, coming into this season, I've uh, trained as hard as I could, feeling great this season. So uh, happy to be here and uh, take first place in Vascula. We saw so much carnage today. Cam Nas going out earlier and then Scott Croxall going down tonight. Just how tough was it to stay on your feet? Uh, it was crazy. Uh, the corners were really rutted up, so you just kind of had to battle, stay low, and uh, keep your line and uh, go from there. This puts you in a very good position for the World Championship. Is that world title on your mind going into Boston? Yeah, it's always on my mind. Uh, I mean, just trying to get through every race one by one. It's a long season, but uh, I'm up there in points and uh, very consistent this year, so I'm going to go for it. What's going to be the game plan for that last race? Uh, give it everything I have. If you have two wins, you know, you have the most points possible. So uh, go into this uh, next race, get some recovery in between, and give it everything I have. Thanks. Congratulations. Thank you. Well deserved by Kyle Croc. So there. Yeah. Can't say enough about this guy. He, as former world champion, had a couple years where he wasn't really in the mix. In the last three to four, has been there time and time again. The finals had an unlucky break last year with a disqualification, and he earns it back on his own. Congratulations. All right, so the final results here in Avescula. Kyle Croxall at the top of the podium here with Mirko Lati in second place and Luca Delago in third place. So Luca, another podium spot for him and a great job by all three of those gentlemen to really battle through. Tough break for Scott Croxall in fourth place. On the ladies or women's side, excuse me, uh, we have, of course, we saw it earlier, Amanda Trunzo at the top of the rankings here in Avescula with a great battle right down to the finish line. And we saw that Anis Orant was right on her tail all the way down. She takes second place on the podium. And Miriam Trepanier with a really nice start, actually, and uh, a great job to uh, push through and make sure that she's got herself a uh, podium as well. And Jacqueline Legere drops down a little bit in fourth place. So. Tell you what, folks, in seven days' time, Boston's iconic Fenway Park will be home to an ice cross downhill course. For the first time ever, the ATSX 1000 Red Bull Crash Dice will be contested in a stadium setting in one of the most famous venues in North America. Over a month in the making, this race will be awesome, Reed. Really looking forward to that. Yeah, I can't wait. I mean, this is, to me, one of the biggest races we've ever had for ice cross downhill, Red Cross. Red Bull Crash Ice in Fenway Park. Gonna be incredible. Well, I'm really looking forward to Boston. Today has been fantastic. The action has been outstanding. We've had our controversies. We've had great races. Congratulations, of course, to Amanda Trunzo and Kyle Croxall, our winners here in Avescula. Guys, we hope you enjoyed the show here for Bree McShane and Reed Whiting. I'm Troy Mannering, signing off from Finland. Take care, everyone, and see you in Boston.